What's up, everyone? So if you don't know by now, Tyreek Hill, which is an NFL football player here in the States for my worldwide followers, shout out. Um, he was arrested on this last Sunday on his way to the football game, on his way to the stadium. And there's some body cam footage from the police officers and things like that. So we're going to get into it just to kind of get an idea of what happened. You guys can form your own opinions, kind of get a feel for it. And then Let's leave, uh, you know, some stuff in the comments. Subscriptions are free. So let's get into the first segment, and then I will jump in in, the, uh, in between. Kill to pull over just outside Hard Rock Stadium Sunday. Hey, don't knock on my window like that, man. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window. Why don't you have your seatbelt on? Don't knock on my window like that, though. No. After don't handing the officer his license. Just get my ticket, bro, so I can go. I'm going to be late, gang. Do what you got to do. Hill then rolls his driver's side window back up while officers demand he keep it down. Hey, keep your window down. Keep your window down, I'm gonna get you out of the car. Then at least one officer swings open Hill's car door as at least two others force him to the ground. Get out, get out, get out. Hey, Drew, I'm getting arrested, Drew. As he lies face down, one officer appears to have one knee on his back as he's handcuffed. The officers then bring Hill to the sidewalk and order him to sit. But Hill resists, citing an injured knee, prompting one of the officers to come up behind Hill, wrapping an arm around his chest while forcing him to the ground. Moments later, two of Hill's teammates pulled up to the scene, including Janu Smith hey man, they got Tyree, the cops over here beating on him, man. and Calais Campbell, who would eventually also be handcuffed. Hold your hands behind your back. Both Hill and Campbell were released in time for the team's matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> it's such a slippery slope. I think anytime somebody's getting pulled over, one person, if not both persons, the officer and the person being pulled over, you can have an elevated, you know, kind of fight or flight, uh, sympathetic nervous system sort of feel. And especially if the person is already stressed, maybe they were speeding because they were late someplace or whatever else, or in this case, kind of seems just like an entitled, you know, pro athlete millionaire. So... The officer comes over, taps on the window, which is kind of standard, I guess. I would think if I knew I was being pulled over, I roll the window down. And I'm going to go into some different pockets. So bear with me here because it's not solely about this. But when you're talking about what a lot of people, black males in particular, have experienced as far as driving in America being pulled over, one of the quickest things you want to do is just show that you're 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 okay like and it's a really crappy place to have to be sometimes but rolling down the windows um you know hands in plain sight like all of those things you shouldn't think you should have to but unfortunately so now this officer comes up to a car um with really tinted windows from what we see and the first thing that he's met with when the window rolls down is, don't knock on my window. Don't knock on my window. Don't knock on my window. So you're, you're already setting a place at the table that is not going to um, really go in your favor well. So I think that kind of pushes the officer up as well. And then when he goes to walk away with the ID, he says, leave the window down. Now, I don't know if that's illegal or not to roll the window back up. It might just be for the officer's safety, which, okay, let's keep everybody at, a, at an even level. But the second he doesn't, and you can see that it's getting, you know, out of, out of control, it's a power struggle. This is where it starts to fault, in my mind, on the side of the officers. Now, Tyreek definitely started off not being compliant, as you would say, but officers are trained and are under an oath. It's their it's their job to de-escalate things. This wasn't a point that warranted that man being taken down like that, especially if you say I have, you know, something like I just had knee surgery and then to follow it up. The officer yells into his ear about, well, did you just have surgery on your ears for not listening before? So the compliance kind of came back in the form of a consequence of these officers jumping on him. But again, it's it's out of control at this point. 
It's out of control at this point. These officers have kind of gotten out of place um, based off of what he had said. And the only thing that I'm glad for up to this point is that there was not a pack mentality that everybody started dogpiling on him because we've seen that in America, I'm sure maybe other places in the world, and it ends often, often tragically. So let's get into the next segment. I was shocked, man. Like, it, it's crazy because it all happened so fast, man. But, like, for me, man, like, it just all happened so fast, and I really couldn't, like, gather everything that was happening. So it was crazy, you know. And me being a father, me being a husband and all that, man, I was just putting myself in that situation like, hey, I got to be smart. You know what I'm saying? That That's where I really, I wasn't on that kind of energy. Like, I was chilling. Like, I was following rules. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't moving fast because, you know, I got injuries. You feel me? I got things that I go through. I play a physical sport. I've been doing this for a moment now, man. So I'm dealing with some stuff. So um, I guess the officers, they felt like I wasn't doing it on their timing. But I, will, I, I was doing it. But, you know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of shell-shocked from it, man. Like I'm, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, it can be shocking. And I've had this sort of interaction with the police before. And it is like everything's happening at once. And even for a guy like Tyreek, who plays a game for a profession that is very high paced and things like that. And part of the, the trick to playing sports, as I learned, was you slow the game down in your head. But this is a different sort of speed and there's different things happening. So I can understand. And he's still a young guy. That's the other thing. So what would what would I have done at his age? I may have been just as cocky and arrogant. And we've seen it across all walks as far as uh, whether somebody was a plumber, whether somebody is a professional football player, actor, musician, like at, in our youth, we tend to do less um, advisable things. So the way he addressed that officer right off the bat was not respectful. And I don't think that he was necessarily in the aftermath. He may be thinking that he was thinking as a husband, a son and a father. But those actions um, really didn't didn't mirror that. Um, and maybe he should, instead of think of himself, think of his father or think of, you know, other people that he would respect. And therefore he could kind of say, okay, this isn't my favorite place to be, but I can at least pay that man that much respect because other people gave me those tools to understand how that works. Um, I do get it about the injuries. And uh, once the level has been escalated, they're not going to really allow that you're going to work on their time, especially um, when you have certain certain couplings. So they may have just looked at this and been like, nope, you're going to do what we say. We're going to take control of this circumstance, which is part of the officer's jobs is to, you know, take control of the circumstance. But I still think that there was a bit that they went overboard um, and it wasn't necessary. Uh, being embarrassed, I, I could see where he should be embarrassed a little bit about the way he responded to being pulled over, but I don't think he should be embarrassed for having some of what I would call his, his rights violated just to be treated that way. And I think most people would not appreciate being treated that way. So that's why I say that. Um, but let's move on to the next segment. So I think what we saw there was, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, some of his teammates, one of which was arrested, and that was in the very first snippet. So you have the police now just kind of having to not only deal with this person who is high profile, but now as his teammates are pulling up and probably other supporters uh, who might be part of his entourage may have arrived on the scene as well. So there's a lot going on. Um, and then you see the part where they're getting him up off the sidewalk and uh, uncuffing him and things like that. But there's a point where he said something about, I'm already rich. Open your legs. So I'm not sure what that alluded to. Appreciate it, bro. Hold on. Thank you, guys. Okay. Oh, I'm not, bro. Uh, 
I'm finna go home, bro. You can hear some of his supporters saying, um, you know, it's almost over, it's almost over, and they're, they're talking him off the cliff, which is great. I love that there were some people that came in and talked sense to him and that he was willing to listen because, again, this is a millionaire. This is a guy in his physical prime. People love him for what he does. It's probably a hard place to be a lot of times when it comes to checking your ego. So the fact that he had people on scene that could, you know, really talk him down and this not escalate. And it's and it looked like the officers kind of backed off as well once, it, you know, people got there and things like that. So I'm glad to see that it kind of went that way. Towards the end, it looked like he was off kind of saying something else. So, no. again, this man was not happy. I can't officer. blame him no. for being unhappy. No. Um, but this no. was... Um, Gone. Some of it was avoidable. He got to go, man. I'll, I'll put it that way. Some of it was that avoidable. Right so there, let's get on like, to the last not only did he um, do, segment. treat me bad, you know what I'm saying? He also treated my teammates with, you know, disrespect. You know, he had some crazy words towards them, and they ain't even do nothing. Like, what did they do to you? They just walking on the sidewalk. So, I don't know, bro. Like, he, he, he got to go, man. Like, I... And not too many times that cheaters say people got to go, but you, out, what they say on Wild and Out, gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. No comprende. Do you think you did anything wrong in this situation? Do you think that your attitude could have been different to the police? Do you think you mm -hmm. could have kept your window down? What right. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I have. I have, man. Um, everything. Like my whole life is all about accountability. Like, how can I get better? You know, um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm I'm human. I gotta I gotta follow rules. I gotta, you know, um, do what you know um, every everyone else would do. You know, so now does that give them the right to literally beat the dog out of me? Absolutely not. But at the end of the day, um, I wish. I could go back and, you know, do things a, a bit differently. I hope he means that. I hope he means the, really honestly that um, the accountability talk and things like that and that moving forward, he will reflect on that. So if something like that happens again in in really not even just that context in just any other area where there might be an authority figure that is asking something even if you're annoyed, you have to think clearly. This is part of growing into manhood is being able to be a little bit more stoic and not be so emotional and quick to respond with raw emotion or um, things that won't find solution or what's best for everybody. Um, what are you guys' thoughts? Should this officer be gone? Did he cross that much of a line? Um, I think that's the big question to surrounding this whole thing. Um He's right. Uh, Tyreek is right when he says, you know, um, basically, I could have done things better, but that doesn't give them the right to beat me. Now, I didn't see him being beaten. I definitely saw him being handled in a way that was not um, in junction with what was happening. And it should and it should be seen as a violation on some part of, of his civil rights. I don't think that it needed to go that far. And I think sometimes that that's um, the part that we can reflect on. How did we get to this point? Did it have something to do with my actions immediately from the beginning? Or were these cops just out for, you know, just to do that? I don't believe that they were, but I think that the one guy was definitely uh, way more riled up and way more on a power trip than he needed to be. So I definitely think that there's some um, so an investigation should be looked into. I think that some training, uh, maybe a fine or something, you know, I don't know. But at the end of the day, honestly, what I'd like to see is these two meet up again, be able to sit down and see each other's side of it and be, maybe be able to explain it because the public perception can change on a dime when it comes to that. The way everybody feels right now is very divided as far as he deserved it. He didn't deserve it. Fire the cop. Don't fire the cop. There's a, there's a divide. I don't think there's too much gray. Um, but if they sat down and were able to possibly speak and just go from there, maybe it might get other people to see 
that solution can be had. We don't have to just like go in different directions and never be able to work our way back to common ground. I think that that's a big part of this. Um, I've, I've had these run-ins and often it was for doing nothing. Um, as a matter of fact, I can't say often every time I wasn't, uh, in a, in a position of speeding. I wasn't in a position of doing anything reckless. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't like it happens. It happens. And in this case, he was apparently speeding. And a lot of times and in Miami, it's probably a money thing where there's a lot of nice cars out there. Um, and so, you know, that those tickets can go easy. I don't want to accuse, you know, law officers of anything. That's not, that's not my point. Uh, but I have been in circumstances with officers um, that had treatment as, uh, very, very much aligned with this that did not mirror what I was initially stopped for. Um, so I understand where um, a lot of people are going to speak to one side of it, but I also have come to grow and understand the other side of it as well. I didn't go in combative every time. There were a few times where, yes, you you caught me in a bad spot. I'm really annoyed right now. And that's not the way to handle it. That's where growth and that stoicism logic come into play. That way you can possibly have a better solution. Um, and that's for everybody. So um, I didn't see anything as far as what the officer was talking about. But um what are your thoughts? That's what we're here for. What are your thoughts? Please leave it in the comments. Would love to hear from you guys. Hit the like, hit the dislike. Either way, I won't be mad at you, but would love to just hear you know, from you guys. Know that people are checking it out. As always, subscriptions to the channel are free, so we would love to have you share it with your friends. They would love free stuff as well. And I hope this finds everybody in your place, pursuit, or beginnings of total health, mind, body, and soul. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. Love, unity, solidarity. You know, there's the subscribe and other videos so you can stick around. <laughs>